Okay. We're recording. We are recording. So I, this is Mandy Johanneke and I am calling the meeting of the Community Resources Committee of the Town Council to order at 8.34 a.m. on April 8th, 2020. And um, this is a virtual meeting in accordance with Governor Baker's March 12th 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A section 18. Um, the public has a link to be able to join in person, well, in to be able to watch the meeting through Zoom, um, and we are recording it for a future broadcast. And so I think right now the next thing we will do is make sure everyone in attendance can hear and can be heard, and that will also serve to take attendance for Angela Mills, who is taking our minutes for today. So as I say your name, please unmute yourself if you're muted. I think we're mostly unmuted right now, and just say present. Um, and so we'll start with Evan. Present. Uh, Steve. Present. Shalini. Present. Um, and myself is Mandy and I am present. We are missing Sarah Schwartz right now as our new committee member, one of our new committee members. And we also have present Athena O'Keefe, our clerk of the council and Lynn Griesemer. Do you wanna say something, Lynn? Say hi. Hi. Um, our president of the council who will be running the reorganization part of the meeting per our rules. Um, at this time, we have on the agenda, we are attempting public comment. So we have some attendees in the audience. The chat box does not exist at this point. Um, so the only way you can indicate if you would like to make public comment is to click the raise hand button. This is also how we will attempt to talk during the meeting and communicate during the meeting for the person running the meeting in terms of um, when you wanna say something during our discussion and presentation and action items and all. Um, so at this time, is there any public Excuse comment? Me. Oh. If you're on the phone and you want- oh, Yep, to I just saw someone on the phone. We have a phone number. So public comment, if you're on the internet, you hit the raise hand button. If you are on the phone, you press star nine to raise your hand. Um, and we will then recognize individuals if they would like to make public comment. Um, at this time, are there, is there anyone who would like to make public comment? If so, please either press star nine or hit the raise hand button. I am not seeing anything pop up in the participants window for doing that. So we will move on to the next item on our agenda as there has been no public comment. The next item is the reorganization of the committee. This is the first meeting with a newly reconstituted committee. So I will be passing this off to Lynn to run action item 3A, reorganization of the committee. Thanks. Lynn. So the first item is to discuss the role of the chair and the vice chair. And this is very similar to the way we did with the council. And Evan, you were present the other day when we discussed this uh, at the newly formed TSO group as well. And so it's a, a way of just discussing what the expectations are and then also what duties might be shared with the vice chair and with other members of the committee. So your thoughts. Can you say that again? What, you, you're asking an for the question or? Yeah, it's, I'm asking if you have thoughts about the role of the chair and the vice chair, and Evan has raised his hand. So I was just going to say maybe the starting point for this conversation is for Mandy to just talk about uh, what she has, as chair of CRC, been doing, what the role has, um, has, has involved. Okay. Mandy Jo? So the typical chair duties, um, agenda setting, um, you know, communicating with Athena to get them posted in time, uh, gathering all the documents for the meetings. I talk regularly with the staff liaison, which is Dave Zomek, because um, this committee has a staff liaison. So I talk regularly with him about things that we need to be looking for, trying to get if, he need, if we need a 
presenter from staff or from the town, I talk with him about how to get that and then he generally tries to organize that. Um, and then I talk regularly with the planning board chair on items related to, for example, for this agenda, the master plan update revisions and the zoning bylaw revisions. Um, I talked about documents, um, procedures, processes. There were other things I was thinking about putting on this agenda that the planning board is, that is in front of the planning board. And so I talked to the chair of the planning board about when they might be in front of the planning board, when we might have to see them to try and do scheduling, but also to pass that information and all along. So that's more of in line with almost the council liaison role, um, but that I have sort of as chair because there's so much overlap between the two committees on what we deal with that I talk regularly with the chair of the planning board for that. Um, yeah, so, you know, keeping track of what we're supposed to look at, um, but that I would say that's pretty much what I've been doing. So I've asked, uh, Athena, if she could actually find the list that um, we used the other day um, when we were talking at TSO. Uh, Athena, were you able to find that? Yes. Okay, could you pull it up on the screen? I'm sorry we didn't send it to you in advance. Let's take a little moment to look at it. So this list um, ha is color coded, meaning that they're the one the items in the red were basically identified as things that the chair of the committee definitely needed to do. The things in black were things that were identified for TSO that things things might be able to be shared, but I think you should ignore the color coding and just look at the items. Are there questions or ideas, thoughts that you need to add, particularly Mandy Jo, as you look at it and you think about your particular uh, role with CRC and also in general uh, with committees? So I did that, but um, yeah, so I would add um, obviously the report to town council that I forgot to talk about. And then I, I did say assembly in the packet, but the point person for appointments, that's a new, that actually will be something that is added on to the chair's role with the manager um, because CRC will be in July taking over planning board and ZBA appointments for from OCA. Um, so that is something that, that will probably get added on to the role of the chair and or the vice chair that has not been part of the role but we should not forget there's going to be that. another line in this case under point person for communication with and that's where we're going to be dealing with the zba appointments it's good to note it here and to note that that is a crc function only and the good news is you've got evan on this committee who has been extremely involved, involved and still is and is chairing OCA during its last several months as they finish up the ZBA and the planning board appointments. And so um, it's a terrific addition to have Evan there with that experience. Um, are there other ideas as you look at this? Mandy, so I'm going to share. Chalini has her hand. Chalini, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're muted. Unmute. You're muted. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, uh, so when we're thinking of plain person for communication with, I wonder if we could consider adding um, communications with uh, people uh, who are maybe like from the com who represent uh, community leaders like the bid for example like should one of us be in touch with the bid to get information for you know get a pulse for that or maybe there's somebody in 
I mean, the different stakeholders, I can just think of the bid right now, just because they are so involved and have a pulse on what the businesses need right now, especially as we come out of the recovery process. So I don't know if this is a similar institution or organization for agriculture and if we need to be in touch with them. And so that's just one idea. And also I'm curious to hear after this about the role of the vice chair. So Shalini, just to um, add to your uh, suggestion regarding the bid and the chamber, um, and I just want to mention that actually Paul and myself are actually starting a mm -hmm. regular set of meetings. Uh, what I, we haven't done at this point is assign that to any committee, but I think your mm -hmm. point is to say where would that eventually land, and I think that's a terrific point because it would really be more, more than likely a CRC uh, thing, although there may be some issues related to finance uh, mm -hmm. as well, as we look mm -hmm. at the options for how we can support businesses. Um, any other questions or discussion on that particular point? Okay, and then Shalini, you particularly asked the question about vice chair. Oh. Oh, uh, did other people have comments? Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the hand up. Um, yeah, so I think the, the, the description is very helpful, but we have to remember that the committee is really a subdivision of the whole council. So our job is to make the whole council's job easier or clearer. So the, and I'm looking at all the point person for communication with, and so these would normally be, to my opinion, things that the council president would do. So, and I think that the committee chair of CRC, for example, does all of these things as appropriate for the mission of CRC. So is it worth, if I were to read this from scratch, to me, it looks like that this is a mini council, which it's not, it's a committee of the council. So should we just say as appropriate to fulfill the duties? person for of, communication as appropriate as appropriate for, to fulfill the, the duties of this committee. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, um, if I were a member of the public looking for who should I bring my issue to, it, this, I would be confused by this. Okay. I think we also need to clarify under, right underneath there, town manager appointments and staff hires. This is really- exactly. Uh, this this really applies to TSO only. Okay. Um, and then uh, I do want to make sure that somewhere in here uh, we add and just tell me where you think it should go is appointments to um, ZBA and planning board. Thoughts for where, where that should go? Yeah, so I think that's under point person. Okay, so why don't we put right after the colon? I, there yeah. Line. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? I mean, to, to some extent, you could, if we're creating, if this is a completely new document that's being created for CRC, you could get rid of that line that says TSO only, and it would just be a uh, point person for communication as appropriate with planning board and ZBA chairs, because um, okay. that's what the majority of the communication is with. And should you say that regarding appointments? Adam? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, to some extent, as Mandy said, she's obviously in communication with the planning board chair for other things, but I think it is, it is useful to call out specifically in the context of appointments that uh, at least with OCA, it's been the chair's job to maintain a relationship with the chairs of ZBA and planning board about uh, membership needs, about uh, the, you know, timelines for appointments and stuff like that. So let's put behind that in, in parentheses, CRC as of July 1. 2020. Great. Other items on this? 
I mean, if, if you're going to do that, I would delete the second and third lines because the academic community is a TSO thing, I believe, not a... So what, well, why don't we just, for the sake of discussion, so we don't lose anything, put behind uh, town manager, UMass, and college and outreach to academic community, put TSO. Okay. Same thing for the, the other line, the CPOs. Yeah, CPO. Right. Okay. Can I go back to that one though? Yeah, you're right. It is only TSO, but there are times when CRC is so involved with community issues. Um, we'll think about that. Okay. Anything else? This is just a beginning of a draft and I think we can all uh, add to it later and maybe even bring it back to the full council at some point. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Steve, did you have something to say? You're muted. Okay. Um, then uh, any further discussion about the role of the vice chair? Yes, Shalini. Unmute, please. Um, well, I just want to learn more about it since I've never been a vice chair in any of the committees. I'd like to learn more about what are the expectations and, and what does the role involve. So let me just start out by saying the vice chair, as with the vice president of the council, serves in the absence of the chair or as in the council's case, the president of the council. My observation um, base is really, it's based on the committee as to whether or not the chair really needs the vice chair to do very much. I, um, in some instances, we may have seen that, but frankly, I haven't seen vice chairs on committees doing a lot. Uh, Mandy Jo, Evan, um, the Chalini, you've certainly uh, been on finance. In that case, I think the chair often consulted with the vice chair on the agenda. Uh, and periodically, the vice chair would read drafts of material. And some t in some instances, would maybe take a little more of a role in the draft of some materials. Evan, you have your hand up. Yeah, so, so I can speak um, both from the perspective of vice chair of GOL under both Mandy and George and as chair of OCA um, and, and back up Lynn's point that it does seem to vary by committee depending on the people on the committee. Uh, and so in GOL, uh, I've been vice chair of GOL since it started uh, under two chairs now. And uh, that role has been almost indistinguishable from the role of any other member of the committee. Uh, there was only one time where it really mattered that I was vice chair, and that's when Mandy went to China, um, and I had to uh, prepare the agenda, run one of the GOL meetings, and also um, do uh, write the report that came from that meeting. And so I functioned as a chair for two, actually two meetings, only because we did a practice meeting um, when she was still there, um, and then one when she was away. And so for for GOL as vice chair, it hasn't really been anything other than when Mandy was not available. Um, I filled in and I haven't had to use that uh, at all under George. Uh, in OCA, Alyssa is my vice chair. And, um, and I said this in the TSO meeting, uh, I think in that committee, the vice chair role is a little bit different in that I use Alyssa very much as a sounding board. Um, and so if I'm thinking, trying to think through the process that uh, OCA should go to, or should go through, I'll usually call a lesson and say, hey, I'm thinking about this, you know, tell me what's wrong with it. Um, if I if I have questions, and part of that's also because Alyssa has, you know, a, a fair bit of experience. And so maybe I wouldn't be as reliant if it was someone else. But I think I would because it, it's really, I see uh, the vice chair is the first person if I'm uncertain on how to proceed that I go to. And so I think it really depends on uh, the committee. Uh, I've really enjoyed having Alyssa as vice chair because she's someone that I know I can just text or call and say, uh, I'm not sure how we should proceed with this, or I'm not sure the best way to do this, or what do you think about this timeline? 
Um, and I always know Alyssa will give me her honest input. And so I think it, it, it's whatever you want it to be. Add, oh, Shalini, go ahead. Oh, so, since it's, uh, it depends on the different committees, I, I would love to hear what Mandy drew experiences uh, and being the president and I'm assuming will continue to be the president or oh, sorry not but what is it chair of this committee what would be your expectations or what would you, what would be helpful and supportive to you Mandy Jo so in the past six months or so I've struggled with this um, prior to the reorganization Dorothy was my vice chair um, and we tried a couple of different things. I did use her as a sounding board for the community impact template as I was drafting that and got her feedback before it came to the whole thing. So I would agree with Evan on stuff like that, that, you know, um, for certain things, the vice chair can be the, the sounding board before things come to the committee. Um, <clears throat> in some sense, I use the planning board chair for some of that too at this point um, for things that are, and, and that is a result mainly of the fact that and some of the stuff that I've used the planning board chair for that for is stuff that has to be, that the council has told us to work jointly with the planning board. So it has to go to the planning board at some point. And so I go to the planning board chair before I even bring it to the CRC to get the planning board sort of chairs ideas on what might be acceptable to the planning board or not, or what things go their way or not. So that when it's presented in public for the first time, it's not, um, totally out there in terms of something that the planning board would never even agree to because it sets forth their process completely wrong. Um, so, so when it, for what we've been doing recently, I've been using more of the planning board chair for some of that. I, I foresee uh, any chair in the future of CRC using whatever appropriate person that is depending on what's going on. Um, the fact that CRC is getting appointments, I could foresee the vice president taking on some of the either appointment organization materials or the non-appointment organization materials because I, from what I've heard from Evan, ZBA and planning board appointments are going to be a, you know, a, a lot of work. Um, and so splitting that, that sort of that duty off either where the chair keeps that or maybe the vice chair gets much of that in coordination with the chair could be a way to, to bet, to, better utilize a vice chair on this committee, but that's just a thought right now. We'll have to see as a committee how all of that works. Let me, let me also mention, um, um, Evan, you took a serious role in the realignment and descriptions of the committees as we've now adopted them. And I don't think that you necessarily did that as vice chair, but you did that as a committee member. You wanna to speak to that? That, that's that's correct. That was an initiative that was as a member of the committee unrelated to my role as vice chair. But I think it's a good example of, you know, yes, there's things that the vice chair might do and obviously the special role of the chair isn't present, but there's also the option or the opportunity that under certain things, a, a member of the committee may take a lead as well. Uh, right. And I think that, um, for example, Mandy Jo, correct me if I'm wrong, but if Pat DeAndos had remained on this committee, uh, she was going to be the liaison, well, super liaison, I'm not sure quite how you all describe it, um, to uh, the planning board, is that correct? Uh, yes, she was designated that. She was also volunteering to help with the comprehensive housing policy drafting when we got to that point. Right. Just and yet that was again, as a member of the committee, yeah. not as, uh, vice chair or chair of the committee. Yeah. So it, it, I really, it, it really is up to how the committee members themselves um, perceive it and um, also um, how the committee members themselves want to take initiative or not. And with the agreement, obviously, of the committee. But I, I do want to go back to Steve's early comment and say, I think your, your addition of the words as appropriate are so important here because all committees are committees of the council. So are there any other additions or changes or questions about chair and vice chair at this point? Okay, then I'd like to proceed with the election of the chair of the committee and I'm accepting nominations. Steve, I see your hand. 
I'd like to nominate Mandy Joe for the position of chair. Okay. And Shalini, you had your hand up, but now it's down. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to nominate Mandy Joe as well. Okay. Are there any other nominations at this time? Then Mandy Joe, would you please make a statement and tell us if you accept it and anything particular you want us to think about? Uh, yeah, I accept it. Uh, thank you for the confidence. Um, I didn't really have a statement prepared, but um, I have enjoyed chairing it for the last six months. I think CRC has a lot of work in front of it um, over the next months and years, um, and it should be an interesting forward and going forward in terms of getting all of that done and communicating and working with the planning board and with all of the members to figure it all out because we got a lot ahead of us. Okay. Any other questions at this point before I move to roll call vote? Okay, then I'm going to try to do this in alphabetic order. Uh, Shalini Balmilm, please unmute and oh. state I or nay. And yay. Yes. Yes. Okay. This. I'm sorry. You actually should state the person's name. Mandy Joe. Oh, yes. Mandy Joe. Yes. Okay. Mandy jo, um, yes. Thank you, Mandy Joe. Uh, yeah, Mandy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Steve. Uh, Evan Ross. Panicky. Okay. And uh, Steve Schreiber. Yes, Panicky. Okay. It's unanimous. So Mandy Joe, you take over the meeting from here. I'm gonna hang out with you all if you don't mind. Uh, although, I, and I'm here if you have additional questions or anything, but I'm really now just an attendee. Thank you, Lynn. And thank you for running the discussion and the election. And thank you to the committee for your confidence in reelecting me chair. Um, we will move on to the election of the vice chair. So I will be taking nomina nominations right now. And nominations do not need a second, and they can be for anyone, including yourself, if you desire to do that. So I see Evan. So Evan. I'd like to nominate Shalini Balnil. Shalini, do you accept that nomination? Yes. Thank you. Do I see any other nominations? Evan, you still have your hand up. Okay. <laughs> I am seeing no other nominations. Shalini, would you like to make a statement? Uh, yes, I'm honored because I've yet not been uh, uh, held this position in any other committee. So firstly, I'm just very excited to be in this committee and honored to be in this committee. And um, and I will do you know whatever is required from this committee and seeing our larger community at this point. Trying to, and I will do my best to keep in touch with the key stakeholders and just as I'm sure any other community member in this committee would do. But also whatever is needed, I'm here and happy to share my skills in research and mindfulness or whatever is needed to support um, um, our chair and also support this committee and work for this community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will now move to a vote. Um, it needs to be by roll call because we're all virtual. Um, beyond the fact that it would probably by, be by roll call anyway. So. Um, Doing it alphabetically starts with me, so I will, I, I will vote first and I will say Shalini. And next is Evan. Shalini. And Steve? Shalini. Shalini? Shalini, yes. <laughs> Sarah Swartz is absent, so she will not be voting. So that is a four to zero with I, one I have half. a point of order. Uh, what yeah. alphabet are you using? That's a joke. <laughs> I was like, it's, it's 8.30 in the morning. It wasn't, I it wasn't either by first name or last name, but... Last name. <laughs> oh, then ball... Then ball uh... but, but we rotate. Oh, got it. Got One it, got forward. It. Got it. <laughs> it's early. Congratulations, Shalini. Thank you. 
Thanks, that, Evan. And that everyone. moves us to the master plan update revisions. So I will, I believe, I think I'm just going to try and start sharing my screen instead of Athena's screen here. Um, and so let me see if I can hold on before I do that. Let me get the right thing up. So did that share to everyone? Okay, just making sure. So we are sharing right now, we are looking at the land use section first, very rough draft um, of the land use section for the master plan update. Um, at this time, I want to recognize that Christine Brestrup, our planning director, has joined our meeting. I'm, I don't think she's intending to speak right now, but I will ask her at some point, but I want to introduce this first um, before I, I go to her. This is something that was presented to the, um, well, was going to be presented to the planning board at its March 20, late March meeting before that meeting got canceled. So the planning board has actually not looked at this yet. Um, so I don't expect us to have a very long conversation. I have spoken to the planning board chair on whether we should even have this on the agenda today. And the planning board chair agreed that we could put it on the agenda, but would requested that our discussion not be very in depth at this point, that she would prefer that CRC's discussion of any master plan update drafts be had after the planning board has had their discussion and then had and then the planning staff has had a chance to revise the draft after that discussion. And um, so given that request, I still thought it important to put it on the agenda to be able to have it in a packet, to have it in a report, since one of the goals and one of the things we voted in the master plan update process was to keep the council and CRC um, updated on what's going on and what those drafts are. And so one of the ways to do that is to make sure it's in a, in, on an agenda. So this is at, at this point, it would be great if Christine Brestrup is willing to speak to what this looks like briefly, and then I can take some questions and any comments from the committee. Yes, Christine. Good morning. How is everybody? Good. Um, so I use the land use um, section of the master plan as my jumping off point because I'm really most familiar with the content of the land use section. And what I did was I went through um, each uh, paragraph and thought about what has been done in the last 10 years that um, relates to the content of the paragraph. And so the writing in red in um, italics is my comments about what has been done, what hasn't been done, what we still need to do, et cetera. Um, in the land use section, uh, the beginning of the land use section deals with existing conditions. And obviously um, land use patterns have changed. Um, our population has changed. Uh, that are different ways of using our land have changed. And so um, I've been working with Mike Warner of the IT department and with our new hire, Ben Brager, um, who is a, uh, about to be a graduate of UMass in the Landscape Architecture and Regional Planning Department. He's very um, skilled using GIS. And he's working with Mike Warner of IT to come up with um, the new numbers for um, you know, you can see on the first page, dominant land use is residential. Well, is it still 23%? Is it changed? I guess it's probably, my guess is that it's probably increased, but we need to get, um, you know, real data from our GIS to uh, show that. So, so anyway, um, some, of, some of the information that um, we need, we're still working on in this chapter. And you can see um, down at the bottom of the first page where it says we're seeking updated percentages from IT and town staff. So that's what that indicates. Um, do I have control over this um, page to move 
move ahead or move back or anything, or is it all I under? Do. I can I can move it along. Yeah, so you might just um, you know move along kind of uh, slowly, casually. Um, so I've written in here since 2010. Amherst has experienced an increase in development of multifamily and mixed-use buildings, mostly in the downtown and the village center. Um, we're going to come up with a number of units that have been constructed since 2000. And 10. I think you'll all be surprised at how many units have been constructed. Um, so basically what we're doing is, you know, filling in information. As you go through this, you know, pages, um, the subsequent pages, um, I've tried to identify, um, let's see, this is a page, I, I don't know what page this is, but anyway, uh, halfway down the page, um, <clears throat> we're, we're talking about exploring design guidelines um, through a planning for housing, housing production grant that we received. Um, I'm sure you've heard about chapter 40R. It's been a topic of conversation. So we have uh, hired consultants using a grant that we got from the state to explore whether chapter 40R is a good um, mechanism for us to use to um, uh, incentivize the development of housing and particular, particularly affordable housing because 40R districts all require 20 to 25 percent of affordable housing. So, um, so I've tried to highlight some of the things that we're currently working on and and things that we will work on in the future. Um, so that's kind of what this is all about. And like Mandy Joe said, the planning board really hasn't reviewed this. Um, I think they've all received it. They did receive it in their packets prior to the March 18th planning board meeting, but then that meeting was canceled. So they haven't really had an opportunity to. Uh, look at it since, and um, it probably won't be on, well, it's not on the next um, agenda. We've been given guidance by the town manager to keep our agendas fairly light um, for the next uh, couple of meetings because of, you know, technical difficulties and trying to work out how to work with Zoom and how to get um, input from the public, but I'm hoping that you know, um, maybe in May that we can start to have um, a robust, robust discussion about planning board and, or excuse me, about the master plan with the planning board. Um, so I don't know how much further you'd like me to go into this, or is that uh, kind of a good summary of what we're doing? I think that was a great summary, Christine. So thank you for that and for the brief update on that. At this point, are there any questions for Christine. Uh, yes, Evan. Yeah, I guess not so much a question, but a, a clarification. So when we were originally told that the master plan update would be limited to, um, I don't remember the wording that was used, but necessary and obvious. Does, <laughs> right, uh, necessary and obvious. And I loved that wording. Um, I was curious what that would look like. And so it's, it's, it's useful now to have this draft to see what the intentions behind that were. So it seems like it's just updating numbers uh, where they might be updated and then updating the plan with what we have done since 2010 underneath some of those objectives and strategies. Is it, is it the intention that those essentially will be the two things we're gonna do the master plan, just updated numbers for things like you know, units and then updating, this is what we've done since. Yes, Christine. Um, that is true to a large degree, but there are also um, places where um, part particular strategies or recommendations of the master plan may not be applicable anymore. And I've made reference to the fact that we may want to you know, rethink whether we want to travel down a certain road or not, um, not literally, but figuratively. Um, you know, certain things had been uh, thought about as things that we wanted to do back in 2010, but they may not necessarily be things that we still need to do, or maybe they're things that we already accomplished that we can kind of put to the side and, and move on to other things. So if there are, you know, particular obvious um, uh, what should I say, strategies or um, recommendations that just don't make sense anymore, or if the viewpoint on certain things has changed so that we're moving in a new direction. I've tried to 
uh, capture that in this writing, but what I didn't want to do was um, try to put in anything that would indicate that the town is taking, um, you know, um, a substantial, substantially different direction on, on different things without having uh, any reason to think, I mean, other than my own uh, thought process or perhaps the thought process of planning board members that it might be appropriate. I've tried to kind of stick with, you know, what we've already done and what we know um, is probably going to happen in the future without, you know, taking leaps of faith or anything to, to make statements that um, nobody's really thought about or talked about. Evan? Yeah, so I appreciate that clarification. So just to, to follow up on the aspect uh, that you said about um, things that maybe we don't think are such a good idea anymore might not happen. Um, so like one example of that I saw in this draft was the transfer development rights. And there's the, the statement that, yeah, we investigated that and then we decided it wasn't a good idea. So are you thinking that there might be a conversation to just take that strategy out of the master plan completely because we investigated it and decided not to pursue it? Or is the thought we would just update and say, at the time we didn't pursue this, but that doesn't necessarily preclude us from investigating it again in the future? Well, I think it's a good, <laughs> excuse me. Go ahead, Christine. I think it's a good idea to leave it in the um, master plan because people are still talking about transfer of development rights. It hasn't really been instituted in very many cities or towns in Massachusetts, but planners still talk about it as a something that people might want to consider. So I wouldn't want to kind of discount it completely and take it out of the master plan, but just kind of leave it in there and say, you know, if somebody wanted to take this further in the future, they could do that. But to know that we've already explored it to a certain degree and found that it wasn't useful at the time. Uh, Shalini. Um, thank you. This is really helpful um, to see uh, what's, what's being done with it. And as I was reading it, I, it seems like there are a lot of um, air, uh, question, uh, excellent strategies in here. And would we be getting updates of, um, you know, like it says an inventory of what are our natural resource lands or the, you know, so an update would include an inventory of all the different assets we have and also uh, using this as an opportunity to see some of the strategies that were not implemented. For example, it says the town should engage in a comprehensive review and update of its zoning bylaw and maps to ensure, you know, blah, 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 that our goals are being met. So would we also be using this as an opportunity to identify some of the strategies is uh, such evaluation, what needs to be urgently addressed? I'm not sure I understand the question, but if you're talking about actually um, engaging in um, inventorying various lands at this point, I don't think we have the, uh, mm -hmm. what, manpower? Resources, um, sure etc to do that i think um you know the idea with this master plan update is that um the town council is required to adopt a master plan every 20 years so this particular master plan was adopted in 2010 so that means that a new master plan would be um needed in 2030 so mm -hmm. what we've been talking about the um <clears throat> the planning board and the planning board chair and i that sometime in the next few years, perhaps in 2025, we would launch a new master plan process. And then at that time, um, we would probably hire a consultant and really do you know, a thorough job of updating the master plan, which would include uh, updating the inventories. We do have some update of inventoried lands um, in the new open space and recreation plan, which, um, should be actually incorporated as part of this master plan. Um, the last uh, update was incorporated by reference by the planning board back a number of years ago, but now that we have a new open space and recreation plan, the planning board really should incorporate that by reference into this land use plan. So that actually does include um, inventories of various types of lands that we own that are 
um, open space and recreation and conservation, et cetera. Um, so you might want to take a look at that if you're particularly interested in that topic. Um, and then I will try to put it on the, the planning board's agenda to incorporate that new update by reference into this um, master plan. Can I just do a follow-up clarification? Um, so I by no means suge was suggesting that we need to change this, ma ma update this master plan. I think this has excellent strategies. What I was um, trying to get to is that this has excellent strategies and as you're going over it and seeing what has been done and not done and removing some of the redundant or unnecessary strategies, also looking at the strategies that really make sense and identify which ones haven't been acted upon. And, and so then, and then we can, given our current scenario, we can prioritize these strategies are the ones uh, we should be focusing on and implementing them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments for Christine or on this sort of brief one we expect after the planning board has had a good chance to look at this draft and after the staff then has the ability to modify the draft in response to the planning board's questions and comments, we'll, we'll come back again and look at it. But that could be a couple months down the road is what it sounds like because it is not Unfortunately, given the situation right now, high on the priority list in terms of remote meetings. So it will be a couple meetings till they see these again, I believe. Mm -hmm. I am seeing no hands. So that means we will move on from this item to the next item, which I hope Christine can stay for on this one too. Um, and this is the zoning bylaws we're in the middle of recommending a referral from the council to recommend a plan for approaching the zoning bylaw revisions. Um, you saw in the land use chapter that those revisions, there's, there's some plans to do a more comprehensive revision from the planning staff. But this, this is a plan to when revisions come, when proposed amendments come, how do we deal with it? And we're supposed to be working with the planning board to come up with something. In the packet, there was, um, I think, I think I can switch this share now. I don't know whether it did switch. Um, it might have switched. We, the CRC in early March um, passed a motion to recommend the adoption by the, by the council of this flowchart. In talking with the planning board chair, we realized we're missing a section and we're missing something. And so what is in the packet for today is sort of an addition to the flow chart um, to discuss with CRC and to discuss with the planning board. Obviously the planning board has not seen it yet. It has been to the planning board chair for some comments um, and we'll take our comments. I will forward another draft onto the planning board chair. So hopefully they can look at it at some point. Um, but let me pull up that document And there we go. Um, and this is a very first rough draft. And the planning board chair has seen a prior draft of this, has seen this draft. This draft I have not received too many comments on because I didn't have time to get those comments from the planning board chair. Um, there is one comment on some wording and then she'll get more. But and, and Christine, have you had a chance to look at this? I. I have yes. looked at it. Um, I just looked at it briefly last night because that's I received it yesterday. It seemed to make sense. I don't think I had any arguments with it. And I understand that it's um, a precursor to the flow chart that um, the planning board looked at on March 4th, um, which is, in fact, you've made reference to it. I, I might just hold it up. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the, the chart that the planning board looked at on March 4th, and they agreed with that, um, but there were some questions about, well, what happens before the town council receives um, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment, and this is what you have prepared here, um, Mandy Jo, is, is the answer to that. Yes. So, so one of the things, this is prepared based on prior Community Resources Committee conversations. Obviously, some of you weren't involved in that since we've switched uh, membership since then. But 
one of the thoughts on the prior flowchart, on the flowchart that's already been recommended to the council but has not been heard at the council, was that um, zoning bylaw amendments be heard in hearings and then at the council level in bundles. Um, and so how do you get to those bundles and how do you schedule those bundles? There's also been a thought that the planning board, it would be helpful to the planning board and potentially to CRC to have set timeframes for when to sort of really have deadlines like have these joint hearings, but we don't want to necessarily be having joint hearings every month um, because that requires for CRC extra meetings because we would join the planning board's hearing on a Wednesday evening. And so how can we make that more efficient, but also have sort of a schedule and then for the planning board know when any amendments, proposals, proposed amendments that are ready need to be ready by in order to make those hearing dates. So that's what the attempt here is to do, to sort of set that forth. Um, I would greatly appreciate comments on both of, you know, the flow chart that I tried to create from the wording to be able to better understand the wording, the wording, and also the timing. The timing from Christine, you know, it's something I randomly picked based on holidays and sort of the flow of a year. Um, I don't know whether it's a logical timing, and I don't know whether three is too little, too many, whether we want to look at four, whether we want to look at two. Um, so comments like that would be quite helpful as we move towards getting something we can really send off to the planning board for their comments. Christine. So I think three makes sense, at least to start out. I think that, you know, we may possibly want to move to more than that, but in the past, we've only had two um, opportunities to present zoning amendments, um, and that was to town meetings. So allowing um, three opportunities, I think, makes sense. There's a lot of pent up um, desire to change the zoning bylaw. Um, most of it, we're hoping, can be incorporated in the process that um, the building commissioner is spearheading uh, the kind of total rewrite of the zoning bylaw. Um, but some of the things we really want to um, do sooner rather than later. And I think uh, Mandy Joe has been having conversations with the planning board chair about what some of those things might be. So having an opportunity three times a year makes sense. Um, I think that you know, trying to do things in the middle of winter when the holidays are upon us and we have difficulties with um, with snow. So, you know, the, the period from November through uh, January um, is, is problematic. And then starting up in February, that's what we're used to. The planning board is used to starting to hold public hearings in February, looking towards a, a town meeting date in May. And then um, certainly May is a good time because that is prior to the summer when many people go away. And then when they come back in September, they're ready to go again. So this um, proposal of having the planning board start uh, in February, May, and September seems to make sense to me. I haven't discussed this with um, Christine Gray Mullen and the planning board chair uh, and the rest of the planning board, but um, as a starting point, it it makes sense. Um, thank you. I, I just want to respond to one thing and then we'll take any other questions or comments that the rest of the committee has. Um, the dates are obviously at this point randomly chosen months. Um, I think I was thinking similar to what Christine just said, but but acknowledge that um, there might be some times where you can't wait till then because of an amendment or some desire that, that it's, it's more um, the time need or the, for an amendment and to hold a hearing is, is necessary to be done as soon as the planning board's ready for that amendment, that the bundling of multiple amendments into sort of one group of hearings isn't logical and therefore you might go outside of the system. And that that is something I'm not sure this acknowledges enough, but is something that I know planning board and CRC have acknowledged that you can't necessarily be strict to this timeline. This is more of a, a, a guide for everything in the typical process, not anything that might come up that needs heard quicker. Mm -hmm. Does 
anyone want to say or have any questions or anything feedback on this? Evan. Yeah, so uh, obviously I'm a, a new addition to CRC and so uh, I don't want to be that annoying person who jumps in at the end of the process with opinions having not been there for the prior deliberations. Uh, I had a, a question and then just sort of my, my initial take on this. The question was, um, the draft says uh, below is a plan for considering zoning bylaw amendments that originate in the planning board or from planning staff. Um, and I'm just curious, we also know that the council or counselors can also uh, offer their own zoning amendments. And so if, if that wording was intentionally exclusive of, uh, of uh, zoning amendments that come from the council, or if the thought is that they'll, they'll go to the planning board anyway. Um, and then the second, you know, sort of knee jerk reaction is, and I appreciated Christine's explanation. I think a lot of it made sense. I'm a little uncomfortable with the idea, Christine made the statement, we used to only have two opportunities and now we have three. And to me, the thought is, well, but the one of the major reasons we moved away from a town meeting style was to have this year round ability to do things. Um, and if the dramatic improvement is we just have one more time of year that we can hear zoning amendments, that doesn't necessarily feel like we're accomplishing the goal of the charter. And so um, my first read on this was, oh, well, this actually feels a little more town meeting-y if we would just add one more town meeting a year. And so I, I guess I'm just uh, curious if, I'm not sure what the major issue is with just being able to have them sort of as they come and have it in the, the lap of the planning staff and the planning board chair to determine when there might be hearings. If there is if there is a feeling that there needs to be this sort of uh, calendar, because um, I, I do just worry about, it feels to me like a reversion back to a town meeting approach where we're only allowed to consider things that are zoning related three times a year. So I will try to respond to both of those initially. Um, I'm going to switch the documents to this flowchart because I think that will help answer some of them. So this flowchart is is a flowchart that shows essentially the charter required and the state law required steps and timelines that need to be done in order to actually enact a zoning bylaw change. This starts at the council receiving a proposal, which means that proposal could come from the planning board, from a counselor, or through a petition under the charter in general, or planning staff. Most planning staff proposals go through the planning board first. Um, if it comes from a counselor or from a petition article, it will have not been through the planning board yet. And so if it starts with a counselor or a petition article, it starts at the blue box, we as council, as the town council receive it, and we have an MGL responsibility to refer that to the planning board within 14 days and all. And then that will be the first opportunity the planning board has to, to um, review that and make any recommendations or changes or anything like that. Um, and so that's why this red box and the green box are actually dotted, that's meant to be optional because if something starts in the planning board or with the planning staff, all of that review, most of that review happens before the council even receives it. Um, and so they, when the council receives it to start the 65 day timeline to hold the public hearing that is required by state law, the planning board won't really have to review the document again the revision again because they will have already they will have created it and so so the process that is in the other document that we were talking about with this potential three times a year and all is a process to say um, if the planning board is seeking a, rev a revision so that they've already done all of the review when do they bundle them up to come to the council to request the hearings that we do jointly with crc so it did actually specifically exclude counselor and petition articles from that because they start at a different point and um, because they start without a planning board review and so that planning board review 
happens while on the flowchart instead of mostly before the flowchart starts. I hope that makes some sense. And when, when they get from, when they're received from a counselor or from a petition, you're already on this deadline and this timing. Whereas if the planning board is proposing revisions on their own, they can do much of that work outside of this timeline before we start the formal MGL countdowns. So that's why it did exclude the counselor and the um, petition articles from that document because we're kind of outside the timeline at that point. That does not mean counselors and petition articles won't be heard. Um, so that's the answer to I think the first one. The second one was the timing. Previous discussions in CRC and mainly with the planning board have been that they are desiring some sort of timeline so that they have, an, a, they have a goal to aim for to finalize their wording on amendments. There is a feeling that potentially if there isn't an aim for certain dates that amendments may get pushed off further and further and not necessarily be finalized to ever get to the hearing stage or it might take longer whereas if they say oh we have to say yes or no by a certain date it may actually prompt more of a consideration of zoning bylaw amendments and amendments on a more regular time frame. So that was the first thing to start this process of thinking about um, thinking about a timeline of this is to, to give some, some guidance to and some dates to aim for. And you know, so deadlines to aim for. The other one was, as I said earlier, while, well, there's two others. One is joint hearings means that anytime you have a zoning bylaw amendment, you must have a hearing in the planning board and you must have a hearing at the council. The council has designated this committee to hold that hearing and the goal is to hold them jointly. If there are a time when, the goal was to be able to do that in bundles, in groups instead of one maybe every week for a while and you're always considering them and you've always got then these different timelines under MGL running and overlapping and everything that maybe if we bundle amendments into groups to say okay we're going to do our hearings as best we can in these groups simply for efficiency of committee time because we have to attend not only our CRC meetings whenever we hold them hopefully when we get back to normal every other week um, but we all then, anytime there's a zoning amendment, we also have to attend the joint hearing, which is yet another meeting on top of that to try and recognize the timing and the time commitment that this committee has to that and maybe make that a little more efficient, number one. And number two, the thought was that by bundling amendments, it's actually easier to get your mind into zoning amendments, zoning changes, and all instead of every one off where you've got maybe you've got an amendment that is wording changes or cleaning up something you don't really need to do that separately it's not too time sensitive so it can wait till you have maybe three or four of those was another thinking of that instead of one at a time if they aren't time sensitive but realizing that if something is time sensitive or if the planning board or a committee or a council desires something to happen sooner, you can always do that. But that in general, it would be better to bundle things into groups of three or four or five, if they're small, maybe a big one, as Christine was talking about, some of these larger zoning bylaw changes, if you're looking at a full rewrite, one is going to be enough and you're gonna do it when it's ready. Because <laughs> um, you can't bundle more than that when you're already looking at huge sections of the bylaw. Um, but some of the smaller ones you might be able to bundle together to just do them all at once. I hope that answers some of those questions. Um, Christine and Steve might be able to answer a little bit more on some of that thinking because Steve's been through some of these conversations too. And either of them- I think that was a, um, I, I'm dying to try it because I think that we won't know if it works until we try it, so. I, I'm convinced that it's worth a try. Christine, do you have anything to add? 
I don't, I don't really have anything to add. I think what you said, Mandy Jo, is, is right. And um, I think we just need to try it and see how it works. And then if it doesn't work exactly like we expect, we'll um, change it. So that's, that's what I think. Shalini. Um, okay, so what I'm hearing is, uh, because I had a similar question as Evan, and what I'm hearing is uh, for the sake of efficiencies and to get things done, it sounds counterintuitive, but it almost sounds like doing it in these chunks is going to have everyone more focused about getting it done. And, and then there are these reg uh, regulations by the charter and state that are uh, sort of imposed on us and we have to do things in a certain way. So uh, on the other hand, there is a perception in the community, you know, with all that our town is really hard to work with and the zoning changes are really hard and, and all, there are a lot of barriers. And so in balancing these two different things, one thing comes to mind is like having more clearer communication with the business community or even the residents who want changes that, you know, this is our thinking behind it and this is why we're doing it in this way and let's work together to move things along. Um, but the other thing I was wondering is, uh, I'm sure, again, I'm sure you've already done that, but have you looked at Northampton or other places that are supposedly more business friendly and retain their character uh, as a town, have that good balance? What is their process like? Christine. So we did, um look into what Northampton does. We had um, the assistant planning director, I'm not sure that that's her title, but Carolyn Mish, mm -hmm. um, who's been working in Northampton for a long time, came and spoke mm -hmm. with the zoning subcommittee. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it was either 2018 or 19 and shared um, their process. And their process is uh, really began a number of years ago when they did their comprehensive plan um, and then since then, it's really been up to staff, planning department staff, to pick, um, you know, some things that they, uh, that were determined back during the um, comprehensive plan, planning stage, and um, work on them to the point where they're ready, and then bring them to town council. They also have a group, I think it's called the Community Resources Committee, that is involved in um, planning in zoning bylaw changes, but in, in um, it sounds like in Northampton, it's really the planning department staff and the town council who does most of the work on the uh, zoning amendments and the planning board itself holds public hearings, but isn't necessarily that involved in developing um, the zoning amendments. So. It, it sounds like it's a little bit different, but we did um, hear from them. And I think uh, possibly Steve was on the uh, zoning subcommittee at that time. I don't really remember. I remember that um, Greg Stutzman was, and he wrote a, um, maybe it was minutes of the zoning subcommittee from that day. I could try to find those and circulate them. But I guess what I'm saying is, yes, we've reached out to Northampton um, but it appears that they have a different way of, of doing this. We may be able to learn from what they do, but it's not really following the same path as, as our path. Do you have anything to add, Steve? If you have experience, no? Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts for now? This is obviously not the only time we will be discussing this. We will have this back multiple times. Shalini. Oh, I just had a follow-up question. So the, it sounds like then they don't do things in blocks. They just do it as uh, issues come up. Am I right then in that understanding? Christine. Um, my impression is that they do things when they're ready. They bring things to town council when the planning staff thinks that they're ready. Um, so I didn't have the impression that they did things in blocks or with any particular um, schedule throughout the year that it's really, you know, when, when planning department staff thinks 
these things are ready, they bring them to town council or city council in their case, and then they, you know, go through the process. So, so I don't think that they're, I mean, they, they probably do try to put things together in the sense that if one change relates to another change, they would put those together. But I don't think they have a strict um, way of doing things. Follow-up question. Yeah. I'm sorry, this is all very new to me, so I'm trying to understand. And just because I happen to be in the business community a lot and I am a business owner, and uh, so if I had to explain to the stakeholders in our community why we're adopting this particular process when we, uh, when there's so many, you know, I mean, and that's a perception and I don't know what exactly is the case, but how do I explain to the business community here that this is why we're adopting this process as opposed to what Northampton or other towns are doing be, where the perception is that it is easier for businesses that are, and I'm talking about businesses that are conducive to our, or development that is conducive to our style and what we want, it's, it's harder to do that in Amherst. So how do I communicate with and what is the logic for us adopting this process? Christine? Um, I think we're in transition. Northampton has had a city council for a long time. They've been working mm -hmm. um, with their process for you know decades. Um, we are just starting. We haven't had any zoning changes at all since the spring of 2018. So we're trying to put a process in place that um, will accommodate the backlog of issues that we have and the complicated issues that we have, We're trying to organize them in a way that makes sense. Um, as I said before, I think, you know, we have to try something and um, try to organize it in a way that isn't very confusing or very um, labor intensive for everybody. And this seems to be mm. a way of doing that. Um, I think you know, given the, the backlog and the uh, variety of um, changes that we want to make, it would be uh, potentially chaotic if we just started bringing things, you know, one at a time to town council when they appeared to be ready um, to the planning board. I think, you know, having a way of organizing them is really the right way to go. And we're ready and willing to go and let's establish a process and start and then we'll be more apt to satisfy the needs of the business community. Is there anyone else that has any questions or anything? Not seeing any, so obviously we will bring this back um, with potentially changes, it might take a little bit because I'm not sure how long it will take for the planning board to get something like this on their agenda. Um, and the goal is to have a, a joint document that the planning board agrees with too before we take it to the town council. So it could be a little bit between things. Um, let's stop that one and we will take, we will move on on the agenda at this point to CRC meeting times. Um, we need to potentially, I might push this to a next discussion. We don't have all five of our members, so it's hard to discuss a CRC meeting time when we don't have all five members, but I do want to put this up um, and, and talk to people about this. All five members responded to our group availability survey, and there was not a single time Monday to Friday, that all five members said they were available to meet, which presents large amounts of problems for us actually scheduling regular meetings. I think given the situation right now, we might be able to get away with not necessarily scheduling regular meetings um, because of what's going on. Much of our work um, depends on the planning board actually doing stuff too, and they are moving themselves into a hearing only almost mode um, where they won't be looking at 
at least initially from my understanding zoning bylaw amendments or even the master plan update for a couple of meetings, which means we won't be looking at zoning bylaw amendments or master plan updates for a couple of meetings um, until they have a chance. So we might not have as much on our agenda and have to meet as regularly. And given just the, you know, throwing up of everyone's schedule, maybe we can come up with something through August at some point that works for everyone at this time and then something else. But I think we really need to reconsider when we might be available to meet. And the other thing that concerns me, and I am one that did not put this, is planning board meets on Wednesday evenings at I believe seven but it might be 6.30. So if there is a zoning bylaw amendment that makes it to the process where we're holding a joint hearing, we have to be available for a planning board meeting on Wednesdays. Um, and it looks like right now only one person is available on Wednesday evenings or checked that they were. Um, I am one that did not, when planning board hearings for zoning amendments come through, I can make myself available. And hopefully others can potentially do that too. So we at least have a quorum of our committee for when those happens. It's also another reason to say we need to do these more discreetly and not regularly if we as a committee have problems making a quorum at that time. But I would love to hear people's thoughts on what might be able to be possible um, for or what we think we should do for either the next couple of meetings into May and June um, or in general. Steve. So I have a question. So five out of five of us indicated that we we're free now for this meeting. And so this, but this time slot got the least amount of votes is, but did people change other things to become available for this particular meeting? Or is this meeting out for some structural reason? Is this time slot out for structural reasons? Um, where's my participant view? Anyone care to respond to that? I, I think I was one that indicated I was available. Um, I have Lynn and then Evan, but I'm going to take Evan before Lynn. So Evan. Uh, so I don't think I indicated I was available necessarily starting at 830. And I think part of that is uh, bylaw review committee used to meet at 830 and that was all it's just a, you, I was never on my game at 8.30 and often it was late to that. I'm not a morning person. So I could do this, but I'm not saying that you would have the best version of me. Um, but I do know, and I don't want to speak for her because she's not here, but I had a conversation with Sarah who indicated that uh, mornings are really tough for her because she has farm chores to do in the mornings. And so she, uh, she expressed a desire to be able to meet later in the day. But I, I, maybe that's changed. She's not here to speak for herself. But I do remember having that conversation with her. Lynn. Um, yeah, two things. Um, one of the things I think that um, Mandy Jo, that we need to take up with Paul and Christine uh, Brestrup is whether or not there might be an opportunity uh, to start moving some of these discussions forward with the planning board. Uh, the second thing is the only reason uh, to consider mornings are whenever is we are trying to space the committees out because of the demands upon staff for particularly right now while we're doing virtual. Um, I have not heard anything from Sarah, so I don't know whether that's the issue going on. Yeah, I can tell you the 10 to 1230 time frame on Tuesdays that had four or five available. I think Sarah was available for that. I think it was Evan that was not available during that that frame. Um, and I think it was Sarah that was not available on the 10 to 1030. But then at 1030, I became unavailable, um, assuming GOL moves to that time um, or stays at that time. I'm unavailable every other week, but if GOL changes times or if we were to stagger, I would become available on Wednesdays, but that still meant I think Sarah was unavailable in that 10 to noon on Wednesday time slot. So I'm not sure we can find a regular time. We might just have to for the next meeting at this point, because we can't do it without 
a member present to be able to come up with a time. We might just have to pick a time or I might have to send a survey out for that. But Steve, you have your hand up. Yeah, uh, if we keep meeting at this time, at least until the end of the semester, that would that would definitely be my preference. But um, so for me, there are certain times that I have a standing meeting every other week. And so it's like every other Wednesday, I have a, another meeting at UMass that historically has been from 10 to 12. But then every other week I don't. So, but then, then it gets really complicated. But I think alternating with another committee is a possibility, right? So, G, if GO, if GOL takes a certain time slot every other week, is there overlap of membership? Oh, yeah, yeah. So. I think I'm the only overlapping member on GOL. TSO has Evan. Are you the only overlapping TSO member? Um, and finance, we don't overlap at all, I don't think. Not anymore, uh, yeah. But, but we'd have to find it. If, if we did something like that, obviously the people would have to be available. So let's, let's keep this on for discussion for next meeting. Um, to see if we can come up with a time. Um, I will skip into the next meeting agenda preview now to just say um, we probably won't have a meeting for a month. I don't think, I don't perceive us having one in two weeks. Um, zoning bylaws will not be ready. Um, what we discussed on the process will not have been, as far as I know, to planning board yet. Um, if it is, maybe we could. Um, the master plan review will not be have been to planning board yet in two weeks. Um, we do have Shalini's Wild Animal Act referral that that is up, um, and we do have outstanding a whole comprehensive housing policy. I might put that on a next meeting, um, but I might not. I think it. I I I will talk to Shalini on how we can potentially do a discussion. I. We were already in a prior setup of CRC having trouble framing a discussion. And on Zoom, I fear it might be even harder to frame a housing policy discussion um, virtually. So I, I have to think about, and I'll talk to Shalini as vice chair about how we might be able to potentially move that forward. But given the situation in the world now, we might just not meet for four weeks. Um, that would give staff a little bit of downtime for us, but it would also allow us to regroup and come up with something. So, but that would end up being what's sort of on the agenda when we do meet again, um, which then takes us, I will take us back to minutes. Um, and let me, we have draft minutes. I had a few changes, so I have up on the screen now the ones that have my changes tracked, and I will just page down to them. Schreiber was misspelled twice, so a correction of Steve's name in two votes. I think it was just switching the I and the E. And then there was a word underneath C, the, the my cursor's around it, committee just was mistyped by accident. And I think those are the only, oh, and I had a verb tense on the third page, suggested instead of suggest. And that was all I found. Did anyone else have any other changes to the minutes? Uh, Shalini. Oops. Oh, it's not pertaining to the minutes. I can, Get oh, sorry. Did I miss on. your hand on something else? Let's finish oh, the fine. minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll get back to your hand. Yeah. yeah. Any other changes to minutes? There, with seeing none, I will make the motion to accept the minutes as amended um, or adopt the minutes as amended. Do I hear a second to that motion? Can I get a second from someone? Second. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. <laughs> um, and this motion will have to be by roll call. 
Um, I will remind you that even if you weren't part of the meeting, you can still vote to accept the minutes so that maybe we can get a majority <laughs> to pass these uh, since we have a new, and, and the two new members that are here today were also at that meeting, just not as members. So that, that does help. Um, but yeah, so I will start in, in alphabetical order. That means we're starting with Evan. Yes. Steve. Yes. Uh, Shalini. Yes. And Mandy is a yes, so that is four zero to accept the minutes. Um, and then I will go back to Shalini. Yeah, I was uh, wondering it, at what point do we want to have some kind of discussion about recovery? You know, like how are we going to help the people who are being affected, whether it's related to business, housing, uh, and the other residents and businesses that have been affected? Would it be our committee that is looking into that? And at what point should we start having those discussions or doing research or something while we're not meeting, maybe look at other committee uh, communities, how, what are they doing or what should we be doing? It feels like we should be doing something at this point while we're waiting. Lynn. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, at, this really goes back to that earlier conversation, Shalini, but I will tell you, because the chamber, uh, particularly John Page, has been doing an enormous amount of research. And both um, um, Claudia and um, Gabrielli are linked into statewide groups as well as national groups and getting suggestions from them. We're just starting to have regular conversations, meaning in this case, myself and Paul, um, as well as Dave Zomack and um, the, ch the chamber and the bid are starting to have regular conversations. And so I think we'll have a better answer for the question that you're asking, which is absolutely the appropriate question. Uh, I think the commitment at this point is not only do we all need to just keep plowing ahead and getting through the worst of this but more importantly, or just as importantly, frankly, um, we need to really be thinking about how we shape the future because bringing Amherst back to the thriving community that it was um, and certainly was on the day that we all started shutting down um, is, has got to be a primary um, a, and a critical um, thing for the future of our town, our, our city otherwise known as the town, and also, frankly, for the future of our higher ed institutions. Um, you know, we, we are a college town. We will become a college town again. Uh, the students and their parents will return. And the businesses that um, are now suffering at the level that they are, or frankly, may never reopen, are a tragic um, effort or a tragic uh, product of this whole effort that's been going on. So as we rethink, uh, economic development, frankly, it takes on a whole new importance for our town. It's not just economic development, but it's resurgence. And um, I, I know you think about this a lot, as do many other members of the council and the town hall, and we'll be coming forward with a way to do that and make sure that either council or individual committees are involved as, as important as this is. Christine. You need to unmute, Christine. Unmute. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that the town manager has been in touch with the planning department through Dave Zomek and um, Nate Malloy has been doing a lot of research. He's very familiar with the community development block grant program, as well as um, he's been working on CPAC for a long time. So. He, um, he's doing a lot of research and he and Dave and the town manager are gonna have a meeting either today or tomorrow to discuss what the options are with regard to those two sources of funds. And there may be some other sources of funds through um, the federal and state government as well. So we are 
um, doing a lot of research and trying to figure this out. And uh, we hope that you'll hear something from the town manager soon about that. Thank you. Um, we did minutes. This is Shalini's question was part of a next meeting agenda preview. Do anyone else have any questions, thoughts on when we might need to meet next and what should be on that agenda? I'm not seeing any. Um, I do not have going back to announcements. I do not have any announcements at this point. Um, does anyone have any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? Uh, Lynn. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, I think you should um, do the poll and get your next meeting sent because I think what this discussion is making very clear for me is that as we go uh, forward with these discussions, uh, there may be, this may be a really terrific group to do some sounding with for some ideas. Uh, obviously finance is involved because the moment we start talking about CPAC PAC and um, also um, the uh, funds available. Uh, so maybe something in about two weeks for, versus a full month might be a good idea for just doing some brainstorming and maybe hearing a little bit about what Nate's been researching. So I'm, I'm actually reversing your feelings about waiting uh, four weeks, if you don't mind, Mandy Jo. I see you smiling. I'm sorry I'm smiling at you. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. It, I, a new agenda item that is more pertinent to what we're doing on would certainly um, move me to having a meeting sooner rather than later. I was looking at what I knew was coming up in terms of stuff and that we, I felt we could wait probably four weeks for that, but something like this, I, I agree, might not want to wait four weeks. So I will work on a poll for potentially seeing if I, our meeting would have been two weeks from now at 8.30. I know Evan hates the 8.30 a.m. I'm, I'm not much different, um, but maybe we can see if that works. We are missing Sarah. I wanna make sure that whenever we have a next meeting, it works for her and that we can get her on this meeting because she would, is going to be a vital um, you know, sounding board too, along with the rest of our committee, um, given her experience in agriculture and farming and all um, in terms of recovery for this. So if that's the discussion, we absolutely need everyone at the meeting. Um, any other meeting agenda preview or items not anticipated? Seeing none, I will then First of all, thank, Christine is still here. Thank you, Christine, for taking time out of your day to join us. Um, I know you guys have quite busy days nowadays. Um, and with that, I will adjourn our meeting at 10.06 a.m. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody.